My last short film was for the Mission to Minerva kit bash challenge and I had to make a lot of really nice renders really quickly and I was getting a lot of aliasing in the highlights and some weird bloom flickering. So let's start with my base render settings in Movie Render Queue, which is to have eight spatial samples and eight temporal samples. I'm rendering in 1920 by 1080 HD. Then I've got game mode override enabled as well as the tone curve disabled because I want a little bit extra latitude when I'm grading in post-production. In the post-process volume, I am using Lumen GI here and ray traced reflections. Bear in mind, this is from 5.03 where ray traced reflections were generally better, but that's not necessarily the case in 5.1, which we'll get to in a moment, so stay tuned. So if we punch in here, you can see the bloom flickering on the crane in the bottom left. And I have cranked the bloom a bit in this scene for the general look that I'm going for, which is probably part of the problem. But at the same time, if I want that look, I'm gonna have to find settings that work for it. And if you look over towards the storage containers again, you can see in the highlight area, there's definite aliasing. I don't want anything in the image that's going to distract from the story, the content itself. Now I do have a short term fix for this because what I needed was a way of getting a stable image quickly. So I can't just crank everything up because it's gonna increase my render time. So what's the solution? I had to go against the prevailing advice, which is to set your anti-aliasing method to none, which is, I'm sure, what you're supposed to do. However, I did notice that since 5.03, they added temporal super resolution as an anti-aliasing option. So I decided to give that a try. So the result here is definitely less distracting. The aliasing and the flickering don't seem to be present really at all here anymore. And that's good, but also, where the bloom flickering was, the bloom is also much less pronounced as well. So I think it's quite a heavy anti-aliasing method that's really stripping away some of the detail that you would normally get. But it was quick and it is stable. It's not distracting. So this is a win for this project. But all of this got me thinking, what could I then do to fix the problem properly, retain the quality, retain that bloom that I want, and what would it do to the render times as well? So I copied the project to 5.1 and started doing some more renders. I've basically cranked up everything for this render. So we now have spatial samples set to 16, which is double. I'm keeping temporal samples at eight, and then I'm adding a bunch of console variables. So first one being screen percentage. Now that is basically rendering at a higher resolution, which is then scaled back down to HD. So I've set my screen percentage to 125%, which is just a small bump, but I'm hoping that it is enough. In the post process, all of the GI and reflections are now set to Lumen. So I quickly nipped over to the 5.1 documentation for Unreal Engine to find some more console variables on top of screen percentage that might bump the quality further. And I found a few that I put in the description below. One of them is motion blur quality set to four, motion blur separable to one, depth of field quality to four, bloom quality to five, hopefully that helps the bloom, and tone mapper quality to five as well, which is probably unnecessary since I have tone curve set to none, but I'm just throwing the kitchen sink at this render. So this render wanted to take two hours, 45 minutes to complete, which is crazy long for seven seconds. There are a few things going on in this shot, which obviously make it uh, intense. There are VDB clouds, there's fog, there's chaos destruction and Niagara all going on at once. That's a lot, but the previous render for this shot took about 30 to 40 minutes. So let's go and have a look at the actual quality. And you can see it's a lot better. There is practically no aliasing now, actually, in both those highlights, and the bloom seems to be so much more stable. This is a really nice render, actually. Can I keep this quality and speed it up? At a guess, I would imagine the spatial samples are doing a good job. I'm going to leave them as they are. I'm also going to leave the screen percentage as well, but I'm actually going to clear off a lot of the other things we did to bump the render up. So I'm disabling all the other CVARs. I'm going to delete all of those and leave screen percentage alone. I'm also going to lower the temporal samples to four. It's a very slow camera move. There's not that much motion blur going on in the shot. So I don't think eight is necessary here. Let's see if this render can net us some more speed. And I'm actually rendering this shot as we speak and it's about an hour and a half through with half an hour to go. So if it stays on track, that's 45 minutes we've saved just by disabling CVARs and lowering temporal samples. But will the quality of this be much lower? 
Okay, now that is interesting. So it looks very much the same, which leads me to believe that it's really just the spatial samples and the screen percentage that are doing the trick. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn off screen percentage, leaving us just the spatial sample increase. Maybe that's all we needed to do. Maybe it was just spatial samples from eight to 16 and that's it. How much more time am I gonna save and will it work? I'm looking at this render that's running now and it says it wants to take 43 minutes. We are getting a dramatic increase in speed just by turning off screen percentage. So that render is now done and it took 50 minutes, which is really close to where I was with my original render for this shot. But it's a really interesting result because taking away screen percentage, bringing it back down to 100% instead of 125 has brought back that highlight flickering in the bloom and the aliasing. You can really see there, especially right on the edge of the crane, those bloom highlights are starting to buzz around a lot more and they were so much more stable at 125%. It seems to me like screen percentage was doing a lot of the heavy lifting as we suspected. And considering the result we had before was so smooth, you could push it further. It still had a tiny bit of, of jaggy and aliasing, but you could push your spatial up to 32 or you could crank your screen percentage up to maybe 150 and you definitely would see an improvement because this seems to be the way that you will actually improve the result properly without temporal super resolution as an anti-aliasing method. This is how you would do it to retain detail and keep those bloom highlights in check. I really like this result. And it's nice to know that it's possible to get a really super result uh, that's stable, not distracting from lumen and ray tracing. But I still, even with these changes, would not have been able to complete that short film on time with these settings because we had tons of background plates that were out of focus that we needed to render from Unreal. It would have taken forever. Temporal super resolution is the right way to go if you're trying to save time because the image is stable and will work. If you're interested in seeing the Mission to Minerva short film that we made, it's right here for you to watch. I think you'll really enjoy it. Me and Ollie have had a blast making it and we really wanted to just tell a really good story. So head over, have a look, and I'll see you on the next one.